Hello everyone and welcome to the Autodesk Robot Structural Analysis Tutorial brought to you by the Civil Engineering Essentials channel. I hope you enjoy the video. Alright, so in this video we are going to continue the design of a steel structure. In part 1, linked above, we have talked about the modeling aspects of steel structures. Please notice that the model I have here is an extremely simple steel structure that serves the purpose of warning you of some modeling mistakes as well as showing you how steel is designed in Autodesk Robot. Now to start designing steel structures, you will simply go to Design and select Steel Member Design, which will open a different GUI for you to start designing your steel structures. Now let's say that you have forgot to do something in your, in your model and you want to access your modeling GUI back. You can do that by clicking on this selection here, which is basically your GUI selector. And instead of staying at steel design, you can get back to geometry, which will get you back to your usual robots. Please notice, that my discussions here are based on the AISC 360 2016 edition. It could be different from one code to the other, however, the basic methodology will still be very similar. Now, if you take a look on the GUI here, you can see that it's split into two splits. There is a definition pane and there is the calculations pane. Now, the calculations pane, as the name suggests, basically calculates whatever you want. You can verify or design. Verifying means to check if something conforms with the design code or not under the given loads. So if you, for example, select a member, you can see that the selection is here now. We are now verifying this member 499. You are using the ultimate limit state to verify. You are using the service limit state to verify. So if you hit on calculations now, it will verify your member 499. Please notice that we have only used placeholder members and you can see that 499 passes with flying colors. How can you read this? This is a check, by the way, this is not design. It says member 499, the section is here, the material is there, and the ratio 0.6 means that you are using 60% of the available strength here. The case that was governing was the combination case. Now, you might want to have more info. You can click on the member and you can see a detailed calculation for that, which shows you all the possible calculations that have to be done to verify if a member is safe or not. Now, there is this K that I have explained before because you can change the K to be calculated from the frame using the alignment charts. However, I kept it as is. Now, you should play around with this and try different settings and check how robot reflects those settings. There are the internal forces, basically the governing forces applied on the beams and the strength. Of course, if the strength is more than the internal force, then everything is fine and you are perfectly good. Now, to do that, there are equations in the code, which is this one. This one is well known, and you can find this in the LRFD section under the section H1-1B. This equation exists in the LRFD AISC design code. There are some other limits for the uh, displacement and the rigidity, and you can see that they all pass with flying colors. You can also check out the forces and see what the forces were that were actually used and you can even play around with the forces if you want, if you have slenderness and stuff like that. Uh, there are also a calculation note. If you click on that, it will basically give you a full calculation note of what you have seen in your window. Everything seems to be fantastic, but this is not design. This is just analysis. As a matter of fact, you can say all here, and hit the calculation button, and Autodesk Robot will start calculating stuff and give you some results. Now, everything seems to be fine, I hope. Yeah, uh, there are some reds here. I will talk about that in a moment. There were some error messages because some members do not have any SLS limits defined. And to rem remind you of this, there were the ability to add some SLS limits, service limit states or deflection states for some members, but I chose to use the default members. I just closed it by mistake, so I'll just calculate again. So one thing that caught my eye was the error here. There was a section that was inadequate. So okay. So this is my section and it seems that it's inadequate. The inadequacy is because of the length. The length is too long. You can see that the member is too long and the slenderness ratio fails. I'm pretty sure this is the bracing of the top floor. So let's quickly check this. Well, this is bar number 506. I'll close everything and take a look. And I basically say here 506 to select it. And yeah, you see, that's basically the long bracing. It didn't fail because of strength. It failed because of slenderness. Anyway, you can check your elements just fine. However, you can even make design instead of checking. You can also check not members, but groups. Like here you can check all members, you have seen that. However, 
We usually don't check member by member because we usually design in groups. So to be able to design these structures, you need to first of all define you some groups. Now, if you remember from part one of the modeling video, we intentionally drew our edge columns to be different than our corner columns, to be different than our central columns, because our intention was to design each of those columns separately. And now is the time to use this separation. So I'll just click new to add a new group. So I selected group here. And now you can define your group. The, for the group definitions, you see that there are some things that you need to define. The first thing is the members inside the group. Now, I don't want member number one to be in my group. I want my columns to be in my group. So I'll just select those things. If you remember correctly, we have chosen this section to represent our columns. And if you want to have more tips and tricks of selection, please check out the tips and tricks a video that is uploaded on this channel. So I have selected my, my members. Now, if I close this and click on member list, my selection gets implemented. The name of the group, I'm gonna call it C1, so column group number one. For the material, it's the structural engineer's duty to select the material. I'm going to select an A992 50 KSI steel. Of course, the selection depends on the availability and the manufacturer. This is the duty of the structural engineer. Before I save, I have made a group and I want this group, when it is designed, I want it to be designed according to some sections. Now, what are the sections that are going to be used to design this? So if you click on sections, you can actually define that. Now, first of all, I'm going to define sections from the AISC. It's going to be an I flange. It's going to be a W shape. And I'm going to let it select everything. So now you can see that all the flanges are selected here. So if you click on OK, this means that group one has all W shapes available for design. Parameterized sections can be used to design plate girders or built up sections, but I will not be using this. I will be using the standard section. OK, that's my first group. I will save. I will rinse and repeat the process for all those groups. So for group number two, I will select the edge columns. So I'll select none. Select the edge columns, click here to implement the selection, change the name, and uh, basically add the I sections all over again. And I will do the third group once again. I'll go to group number three. This time I will first of all delete my selection and select none here. And I will select my internal columns as you can see. Click here to implement the selection. Click my, call this C3. Double check the sections. Those are my W shapes. I'll save that. And I can actually get back to section two, group number two to double check my group if you want. However, I will just continue. Uh, I also want to make another group for my main beams and secondary beams. So I will have to select those. And you can see now why it was important to give place for the sections for the beams, because you see, it's very easy to select them right now. So now I will just call this my group B1, double click. I select it on my beams, click here. It implemented the beams. And now for the sections, it's W shape, perfect. I'll save that and, and continue on the next group. I'll click new again and so on. All right, so now I'm actually at group number seven. So I thought I would just talk a little bit about it. Now group number seven is the group of the bracings. So I'll just select the bracing, which is the P5, as you can see. I selected all my bracings, I say close, I add those. Now uh, I'll just go to my sections and this time I don't want any W shapes. I want actually to have pipes. So I just delete that, go to my AISC code, select my pipes, take my pipe P, and now I have all my pipes available. Of course, you can take more pipes if you want, extend it, but I'll just keep it as is. So now I have all my groups. To quickly recap and double check my groups, you can basically go like this and select group number one, select the member list and paste it in the selection just see the members and yeah this is correct <clears throat> you go to group number two now i don't want to save Control c Control v take a look yes this seems to be fine group number three yeah that's okay group four group five group six and group seven which is my bracings fantastic everything seems to be fine now we don't want member verification we want code group design but before we start designing we can actually perform a check on the group. So if you click on code group verification, you can actually add the number of groups. Now you have seven groups. You can say one, two, seven, and it will understand it. Or you can basically go to list to the groups and select all, basically, which will tell you one to seven. So I'll calculate now, and you can see that all the groups seem to be fine, except for those two groups. There is a mistake in group B3, and there is a problem in group B3, and there is a problem in group P5.
if you see, we have groups, and inside each group, you see one element. The element that is shown in the group is the most critical element, meaning the element that has the maximum ratio between the applied forces versus its resistance. So group C2 had the most critical column to be column 493, and so on. Now, even in code group five, 6, B3, you can see that beam number 523 was the most critical beam, and you can see that the loading ratio is too much. P5, you can see that the loading is okay, but it's unstable because of the slenderness ratio. Since we know the groups are not all okay, let's design them. So how do I design that? Well, I switch to code group design and basically select all my groups, or 1, 2, 7. And now I can start playing with my optimization. I can tell robot in optimization to consider many choices for my design. For example, I might want to have a maximum section height of something, flange width of something, some geometric optimization constraints, or I can simply tell him to minimize my weight. If you click on that and select calculation, you will see that it runs and it takes time. What robot is doing is it's testing all the provided sections that I have suggested here. There is a small information here that says that for some members, there was no lateral torsional buckling because there is only, for example, no moment. This happens because we have some members that are bracings and we have released them from moments. So you see, for each member, for each group, for example, group C1, uh, it suggests this section to be the best and the most critical column was column 488, and you can see that it is on the edge, so it's the most optimum section you can use. All right, so if you go to the next one, you can see that column C2 has this section to be optimized, and even B3, which was failing, now has found a section that is perfectly fine, and you can see that the ratio is at 100%, like it is on the edge, literally. Even the P5, the bars, well, the P5 was not enough, so it selected the P10 instead, and yeah. Now you see in P10, uh, it wasn't the strength that was critical, it was the uh, slenderness that was critical. Now, those are the selected elements. However, uh, the elements we have analyzed our structure with are now different than the elements that are suggested by Autodesk Robot, which means that our analysis is now null and void, because you know that the stiffness of the elements affects the moment distribution between the elements in an indeterminate structure. So how would you do that? This becomes an iterative search. You simply select change all, which will change all the cross sections to the ones that you have seen here, to the best ones here. If you click on yes, the cross sections get changed. However, now you have lost your results. So now after changing the cross sections, you have to run the analysis again and perform a group verification. Because when you change the cross sections, the internal forces in those members would have changed. So now you should make a code group verification to make sure that everything after the modification seems to be fine. Let's take a look. Uh, no, see, B3 once again suffers because when you change the cross section, the load on B3 changed and you can see that it's barely unsafe so well you have to design it again so fine let's do that code group design calculation so it designs it again and you see for this column there is no change it tells you okay but for call for beam b3 well there is a change in design and we are going to change all and we're going to keep doing that by the way so that's my second iteration now if it doesn't work if robot still suffers i would manually then change the cross section three steps larger just to be and the, on the safe side. So this becomes some kind of uh, repetitive task that you have to do. Now I'll leave it for this. I will keep it like that. I will leave this for you to, uh, to investigate. So that's it. This ends a very quick modeling and designing of seed structures tutorial. There is more detailed tutorials to come. For example, how to model uh, complicated shapes, how to design connections, how to design foundation of such structures. This is something that will be uh, explained in the future. However, please notice that the structure that I have shown to you today is a simplified structure which has the purpose of uh, introducing you to the modeling aspects and design aspects of steel in Autodesk Robot. I hope that you liked this video. If you like this video, please do share, like, comment, and subscribe. This is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel, and we will catch you in the next video.